2022 is the best year for air cooling fans to be alive. Companies are coming up with some really quality stuff and we have Deepcool's latest offering in here as yet another example. This is Deepcool's AK400 and you guessed it right, this is a smaller brother of the AK620 cooler we saw last year. That cooler was great value for money and this is it but with some things pulled out of the box. Now talking about the box, Deepcool's packaging keeps evolving and this time around we got to see a clear white box with a huge focus on minimalism. Inside the box you get the mounting hardware and extra fan holders in a plastic packet, a user manual and the cooler protected in some foam brackets. I am giving the unboxing experience a 7 of 10, pretty standard, no bells and whistles attached. Now this cooler contains mounting hardware for both Intel and AMD but it does not contain any thermal paste. Instead the thermal paste is pre-applied in the base of the cooler and is protected by a small plastic placeholder. I do not like this move when they just could have included the thermal paste in a small plastic sachet and placed it in the plastic packet. I mean in these pre-applied scenarios the thermal paste might dry up if the cooler sits on store shelves for a long time. Ok now let us go about the dimensions. Well to start things the cooler is a single tower cooler and that probably is the largest difference when you compare it to the AK620. It comes in at around 45 by 120mm in the length and breadth segment. That makes it a bit smaller in terms of the length and much smaller in terms of the breadth. I mean this is a single tower cooler so thanks to that. The height also has been turned down from the 160mm we saw on the AK620 to 155mm to fit on a large variety of cases. A lot of mini ATX and ATX mid towers drop out at around 155mm so this cooler is going to fill in the gap pretty well unlike some other budget offerings like Cooler Masters Hyper 212 which goes for a full 160mm tower despite being a budget offering. Cooler however is very well designed. It is out of the box and does borrow a lot of inspiration from the AK620. The fins have an interesting and unique checkerboard design and that sets the AK series apart from other offerings in the market. Although this is something you would only notice while mounting the cooler in your case, I mean I like the attention to detail. The top however is one of the best designs I've ever seen. The checkered panel reflects light in a very unique way and it also has a deep cool logo printed in teal. It is very easy to remove, I mean at least the vanity cover comes off with a very easy click. The plastic enclosure however requires some very fine allen keys for removal. Removing this enclosure should theoretically improve the performance as a lot of heat is dissipated through the top of the heat pipes. But we could not test the real world delta because it did not have such an ultra thin head key on hand. Also removing the top cooler will reduce the height of the cooler by a few more millimeters thereby increasing its compatibility. Deep Cool also has a completely white version of this cooler the AK400WH which will launch later this year. I mean that cooler seriously looks awesome. The base of the cooler comes in at around 35 by 40 millimeter and it is a solid aluminium block with copper pipes finding their way through. The base could easily have been a bit bigger provided how big the LGS 1700 and the upcoming AIM 5 socket with 1718 pins is going to be. The cooler has 4 6mm heat pipes for heat dissipation unlike the 6 we find on the AK620 and I think 4 is quite standard at this price point. The pipes also have been nickel plated so that matches the color scheme quite well. Now Deepcool says that this cooler is rated for a massive 220 watt heat dissipation. These numbers vary from person to person depending on how you are calculating the heat dissipation so I'm not not taking this number very seriously. Now the fan that you find with this cooler is the latest FC120P from Deepcool. It is the already available FC120 but without the RGB and some other features. But the fan looks quite sharp and it has a solid build quality. The corners even have rubber stoppers that have been built to reduce vibration from the fan's operation. This is quite cool. Deepcool also has included a couple extra fan holders in the box so you can pair in another FK120 fan now that they are available in the market. You still cannot buy the FC120P fans in the market so you cannot go for an even look. A 7.5 of 10 for the aesthetics, build quality and other features. This cooler is quite well done. Now let's talk about the installation procedure. You can skip this part but I recommend you do not because Deepcool has done something really innovative. A lot of budget coolers have really messed up mounting mechanisms right? A big example can be Thermaltix UX200 cooler. But Deepcool has done something very sophisticated and I am really proud of this design. Both Intel and AMD have the same mounting principle. In AMD, Deepcool uses the included backplate, adds 4 spaces to it and then puts a mounting plate. 
The cooler then snaps onto this plate using a couple of spring-loaded screws. The process is quite simple. For Intel, the company includes a back plate that works for both LGA 1200 and older and the new LGA 1700 using a very interesting flipping screw design. Other than that, the process is quite similar to AMD. The fan slaps onto the grooves of this cooler pretty easily. I like this. Overall, I'm giving the installation experience a solid 9 of 10. It is really well done. Now the cooler is very stealthy. It does not leave a lot of imprint on the system and it does not even have a bit of RGB to create some noise. It is quite minimalist and looks very visually pleasing when coupled with any system. With the fan attached, the cooler comes in at just 70mm, so it does not really need to have any substantial RAM clearance because it can give 100% clearance to any RAM stick possible. Even on a fairly small 226 by 174mm board from Gigabyte, there are H3 and MH 2.0, the cooler left enough space to populate both of the RAM slots without any problem. Graphics card clearance isn't remotely an issue because of the low profile design of this cooler. The cooler looks sleek and I'm giving this another 7 of 10. Ok, now time to get into the thermal results of this thing. Now I tested this cooler with a Core i5-9400F which is much of a processor that you would realistically pair with a cooler at this budget. And here are the results. This cooler has extremely good temps as you can see, compared to the stock cooler, the temps are really much better. The 9400F isn't a hot running chip and thus this is no surprise. Now the mount on Intel chips is 2 point but that does not hurt the performance at all. A solid 8 of 10. Now for AMD, let's take something unrealistic, something that you would not normally pair with a cooler at this budget the Ryzen 7 3700X. Now this chip is fairly hot running so we can test what this cooler is really capable of. Now even with this processor, this cooler scaled pretty well. At stock PBO, the cooler got quite hot but at 4100MHz, the temps are quite decent. I mean, this is quite competitive to be honest. Now this cooler was performing so well that we decided to snap the fan off and test what happens. The temps hovered in the upper 90s and it got to a maximum of 98 degrees. But the system still did not crash. Passive cooling guys, take it. Ok, so let us talk about the included fan now. This is Deepcool's FC120P and as I mentioned earlier, it is the FC120 but without the RGB and a few more features. Now these fans go from 500 RPM all the way up to 1850 RPM. So that is quite a wide range. Also this fan has a 4 pin PWM header so we can completely control its speeds from within the computer. We see quite ok results with the PWM control. However 25% RPM is holding the fan much behind than expected. At 25% the fan hovered at around 600 RPM which is 200 RPM short of what we should see. But as you put the fan to 35% it magically scales up to 850 RPM. The noise performance is quite acceptable as well. We are just looking at a difference of 2 to 3 decibels as we go up. Remember that sound is a subjective metric and a difference of 3 decibels means that the second sound has twice the intensity of the first. I'm giving the fan a 7.5 of 10, it is quite decent. Now this cooler will sell for around 2370 rupees in the Indian market or around 30 dollars in the USA. At this price point, this cooler is a solid performer and it even threatens some more expensive options. I am bamboozled with the value of this thing and 9 of 10 recommended to anyone looking for a solid cooler on a budget. Ok, so that wraps it up. This is undoubtedly one of the best budget coolers you can get on the market today and we have an average score of 8 of 10. Cyber TikTok Gold Award, pretty well deserved. The lack of RGB might be disheartening for an RGB fan like me but if you're looking for solid performance, this cooler should be what you're after. The performance on both Intel and AMD chips were quite awesome. Oh and talking about Intel and AMD, check out this fun Intel vs AMD comparison I made last week. That was quite fun.